Hello, Broadway fans. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and I am thrilled to be here with Carmen Cusack, who was starring in Flying Over Sunset this season. And Carmen, I don't think I've ever, uh, it, it's kind of a rare occurrence to have a musical described as these people who are experiencing an acid trip together. Uh, I can't think of any other uh, show musical I've ever seen that's covered that topic. So I'm curious, I'm like, hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of a kind. Um, how was it first described to you? And what was your first, you know, your initial reaction to it? Well, James sent me an email uh, when he was starting uh, the work, the workshop at the Lincoln Center. He sent me an email and I and it was a random email because uh, I had I never I don't think I'd ever received an email from James Lapine. So when it came through, I was like, James Lapine is emailing me. Um, read it and thought, gosh, Claire Booth Loose, I, I need to learn more about this this woman. Um, and then of course the there is the acid um mixed into this scenario and I just thought well this is really interesting because at that very time that he sent that email I was visiting my my dad and I don't get to visit my dad very often he lives um in Seattle well near Seattle but I thought what a perfect time to uh throw this kind of interesting project at me and for me to to consider because my I know my dad did acid <laughs> back in the day so I'll ask him about this because I I I um, had not, well, I had done acid, but, but I, I don't remember it because I was two years old when it happened. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> true, true story. My parents were teenagers when I was born, and I think it's, it's, it's been written somewhere, but it is an actual true story that my mother found me teething, literally teething on a little tab because yeah. they were having parties. They were still in high school. They were having parties, and uh, they were trying to play house with me. And uh, so I knew that my dad had done this. And so it was really interesting that this, this, this email from James Lapine came to me uh, wanting me to look at this role and, uh, and that it was about acid. So I could sit right down with my dad right there and ask him all about it. And it was just fascinating. It was really good yeah. timing. I thought, well, there's something here. I, I have to take this because the timing is just too, too unique. Yeah, absolutely. And we should talk about Claire too, because she, I admit, was not someone I knew a whole lot about before this show. Um, right. I had known the women, um, but not really much else. And then when I read about her in the program, it's like this woman has had seemingly every job title imaginable. Um, what was your What was your favorite thing you learned about her? Well, uh, that she was doing it all, and 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 what was kind of unfortunate is that I I couldn't believe I had never heard of her. I mean, she was such a trailblazer and was navigating the political um, climate when there were no other women in that situation. She was the only woman in a room discussing politics at a time when women, you know, when men wanted to talk about politics, the women were, you know, sent to the kitchen or something. And I just thought, what a, what a fascinating woman. What, um, and, and possibly, um, uh, yeah, well, clearly incredibly intelligent, um, but possibly at times intimidating. So I found, I, I just found that very fascinating about her because it's one thing that, I mean, we're all, for the past several years, we've been in a very heated uh, political climate. Mm. And uh, I've had, very, I feel very passionate about um, my stand in it, but I, I know that it's also just such a, a discussion that uh, that people are trying to steer clear of because it's just so much, you know, I, I I try to tiptoe around the subject right now. I'll just say that yeah. with family and everybody. Um, and so I just thought, what a wonderful role to just be able to really just um, have your stand and 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 feel like 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 you can, like you can stand amongst all these people and express and express yourself and explain yourself. Now she was very very conservative and and mm -hmm. a, and, and a staunch Republican. <laughs> But I just, I found it fascinating. Yeah. Well, uh, let's go back to James Lapine for a minute too, because he directed this and, and wrote the book and the, it's such a unique structure, I felt, you know, beyond just being about, you know, depicting uh, an acid trip, the structure of the musical feels very unique to me. Um, and that's trying a lot of new things. What was it like working with James and, and within that structure? 
I found James to be incredibly kind, patient, um, giving, sensitive. Uh, he was really a, a mentor for me. Um, and I don't know if, it, if a lot of it had to do with the fact that we were putting this together in, and we were about to open it in 2020, in March of 2020, and, and, and stories were starting to come in and people were starting to feel very vulnerable. Um, I think he was just, he, he was very nurturing to all of us. Um, and he was the calm in the, in the, in the midst of the storm, which I, I think is kind of surprising maybe for some to hear that, but he really was the, the big papa looking after us all in a way um, that we really needed. Yeah, and that 2020, I think you, I mean, if you can think back that far, because <laughs> time works differently now after the pandemic, I think. Yeah. Um, but you, I believe, only had your invited dress. Broadway shut down the day you were yeah. supposed to do your first preview. And with so much time in between that and when you finally got to open, did, how did that time affect how you played the character? Oh my God, it was so surreal uh, to have all that time. We literally had the dress run, the dress under the, the red dress run on the March the 12th. March the 13th was supposed to be our first uh, preview and it closed, Broadway closed. So that was crazy. Uh, I remember not having time to really do anything except put a bunch of things in a suitcase, get on a plane and come back to LA. The rest of everything else got boxed up and put in my dressing room at the Lincoln Center. So fast forward, what, a year and a half later, almost going up, hitting two, was it? Almost, yeah, a year and a half later. Um, never thinking that it was gonna sit there in that dress, that we were all gonna be apart for so, so, so long. Um, to enter that dressing room was like a time capsule. Um, I think I, I have a little video of it that I, 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 I kept meaning to post and never did, but um, luckily we all decided to stay in touch and we had Zoom meetings like every other week or every other month. Um, and that kept us all together, but it really did uh, mark uh, a moment in time that I'll never ever forget uh, with a cast that I'll never ever forget. I think we all have bonded for life over this experience. Mm. And as far as, what I think it brought to the character is, uh, I probably no, don't know if I can really define, but just the need to uh, express to people how important it is to, to not be afraid of having a connection with people, just to, to understand that we're all connected. We're all just in this, in this beautiful energy and I think that's hopefully what people learned from, from our acid trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of acid trips, I think one of my favorite moments of the show was when you sing the title number, which I don't think has left my head uh, since I heard it. Is it difficult to, you know, is there a temptation to like go really big or crazy? Is it difficult to figure out how to play an acid trip and how to sing through an acid trip? I try to not think too hard about it. I try to just have fun with it, if that makes sense. Even though the, the, some of the acid trips weren't very fun. Um, you know, you go in, you go from light to dark and, and the trips come in waves, which is actually, I think, very close to how, how it happens if you do uh, experience an acid trip. And so I kind of just embraced the light with the dark and had fun with both. Um, just stayed open, stayed incredibly present in the moment. It's just tried not to overthink it, really. Mm. Yeah, she certainly has, uh, she has a lot of dark in the form of really extreme grief. Is that, do you think, why she, why she experimented to begin with? Yeah, I think sometimes with people that, we, when you lose loved ones, um, Grieving is such a thing, you know, that there is no, there aren't, there aren't any rules as to how you're supposed to grieve after losing someone. And yet, um, I think for her, she's such a, she's such a forward motion woman that I think she just kept wanting to get past it. She wanted to get, get through it, face it and get past it. And so I think she thought 
this is my own, this is what I think. Um, she just thought maybe uh, experimenting with this acid would, would get her to face these things so that she could come through the other side and, and move on with her life. Yeah. Because I think certain, certain, you know, some certain grievances were possibly stumping her in her, um, in her focus with her career and just her, her focus in trying to find peace. Yeah, she says even um, in another great song, you have how after she sort of had the experience with her mother on the trip and um, she says something along the lines of like, a, despite everything I've accomplished, I feel empty inside, which yeah. is quite a thing to say after everything she's done in her life. Um, what was it like singing that song? It's such a, a you know, vocal powerhouse to sing. Uh, it was such a gift, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we worked on that song. Sorry, I keep getting these, these texts <laughs> text from people on my phone from that birthday stuff. Um, we worked on that song and we changed it so many times, <laughs> the 11 o'clock number. And when we finally came to how I just thought, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. The gods of theater. Thank you, James. Thank you, Tom. Um, thank you, Michael. It's just everyone just made that moment happen in such a way that, and I th and I think that it's it's the biggest question that we all have is is how how can I get through this? How are we all gonna you know when something hits you in such a devastating way? You question your the reason you question what you're doing here. You question everything and and is there anything out there? What's next? And and how do I carry on? And everyone can connect on such a deep, deep level to that. And it was not a hard thing to process it. And it certainly wasn't a hard song to sing. It just comes at you right then and there. And, and uh, it was such a gift. I, it was, someone asked me how it felt to be on a stage with nothing. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute. Oh yeah, it's just me. Oh no, for, for an iota of a moment, this, the next show I, I had to do after that interview, I thought, oh God, it's just me. But then I thought, no, 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 stay in it, Carmen. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, you're on stage most of that show. Um, how does that kind of workload compare to something like Bright Star, which was another place where you dominated the stage for the whole thing? You seem to have all these like really mammoth, rolls under your belt i'm so lucky and feel so blessed and so spoiled um so the question was how do i how do i what was the question well uh what is it what does it take to in terms of stamina to be able to just you don't really get a lot of breaks there trusting everyone else on that stage listening uh not getting ahead of myself um and just receiving the energy and giving it back it's just staying open mm -hmm. and uh just not overthinking just staying present staying open receiving and giving back it's just it's a beautiful thing when you're when you're in it and it's that beautiful dance with the other characters um it's i miss it it's it's uh when i don't have it i miss it mm. um that i also mentioned bright star and that uh for that one you got a tony nomination uh, which was very well deserved. Um, what was what was that moment like? What was your kind of favorite memory of of that Tony Awards experience? Of the Tonys, my favorite memory is um, you know you you live all you, when you in this career you always you always dream of this of these moments when you get that opportunity and what you how it how you feel and and I honestly have to tell you it was probably the most calming feeling. I had had the entire Tony season um, amidst all the luncheons and the, the interviews and the, and, and the various award ceremonies that were happening during that, that time. That was the calmest. And that's what I will always remember that at that moment, when I was on that, that little house on the stage at the Tony's, it was surprisingly the most calmest peaceful place I'd ever I'd, I'd experienced and when I turned around singing tell me I'm not alone and I'm turning around to all of my cast members and the way that they uh beautifully the way Josh Rhodes beautifully choreographed that for the Tony's that Tony's moment 
um, I get to turn around and the camera was following me and, and seeing all the cast members as they came around me. And it was just this beautiful, uh, just, uh, just this warm blanket of love because I adore every single person in that cast. Of, of, all of their faces gleaming at me. We were all having this moment together at the Tonys. It just, I'll never forget it. It was the most calming, peaceful blanket of warm love that um, I'll, I'll always, I'll take that, I'll, I'll have that memory till the day I die. Wow. Well, that's a great one to carry with you. Um, hopefully filled with many more memories. Um, so thank you, Carmen, for, for talking with me about Flying Over Sunset. Um, we're very happy to have it live on in, in the cast album form. Uh, if, you, if you're out there watching, make sure to subscribe to Gold Derby and keep up to date with us. Check in with us throughout the Broadway season. Carmen, thank you once again. Thank you. Bye.